wash clay and ceramic. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. <laughs> Today, we're gonna take this 2014 CRV from a rather nice blue to a much nicer blue and decontaminated blue. Often we use iron remover as the lubrication for our perforated synthetic decontamination towel. But there's also a method not to confuse you where instead of iron remover, we're actually gonna use another lubricant that will protect at the same time. Right, so we're using ceramic gloss. It's gonna give it gloss, it's gonna give it depth, and the ceramic gloss adds a lot of lubrication when we're using that towel. Now the other item we're gonna be using is rinseless wash. And the combination of the rinseless wash with the ceramic gloss gives us excellent lubrication, safety for your paint with the perforated synthetic decontamination towel, PSD for short, and then we're good to go. And we'll have a nice, shiny, protected car. It's gonna bead, it's gonna sheet, it's gonna do what the customer wants. As your one-stop shop for detailing education, we're so grateful for you. If you're grateful for this content, please do subscribe to the channel. It helps us continue to grow and make great videos. We also love to hear your comments and we get ideas from your comments. Exactly. One of them from detailers out there is like, well, do I use this for the towel or iron remover? If you're gonna use ceramic gloss as your lubricant, Ivan, yeah. it's more for a maintenance wash and clay and ceramic, right? You're not right. going for a overspray, deep dive, this is hammered paint. No. Um, that's when you wanna do your standard iron remover with a decon towel. Right, this vehicle is actually well maintained. It's a fan of the channel that owns this vehicle that's local to Omaha, and he volunteered his vehicle for us, so thank you very much. I wanna get into this, but how often would you say if someone liked this method, they would wanna do it? Every six months or so. Okay, I was gonna say every two months, because I <laughs> well, you, go way over. Yeah, no, you, you can do it more <laughs> often, but it becomes a necessity after about six months. So right. the ceramic gloss starts to wear away. You're hand washing the vehicle, it's gonna last a lot longer. If you are not washing your vehicle, it's not gonna last as long, because it has to now deal with all these contaminants on the surface. But someone that regularly maintains, regularly hand washes their vehicle, it's gonna last a long time. All right, let's get to it. Yeah, so first, rinse this wash. We need to mix it up. We have two buckets here. That way we have a two bucket method, one on either side of the car. And this one is almost full. We're, oh, we're exactly at five gallons or 20 liters. So we'll add five capfuls. I like to say with our PSD towel, our decon towel that like, I just have it in my bucket for every wash. I'll use yeah. it to do bug guts on the windshield, maybe the front bumper. Uh, but you don't need to decontaminate that often. But the beauty of it is it's safe enough that you can use it as often as you want. So when I said every two months using ceramic gloss as our lube, yeah. it's just something that you could do on a frequent basis to stay on top of decontamination without it becoming a big issue. Right, now for pre-spraying, we're gonna try this little tool out. This is a uh, battery powered sprayer. And this is pretty nifty, we like to try stuff out. Yeah. And if it works for us, eventually we'll add it to our, our store if we see the need. But for the moment... There have been brushes and towels that have made videos that never made the cut, so yeah, this could be one of those things, but uh, let us know what sprayer you use in the comments below. I, I, uh, I do believe in the power of a good sprayer. You could put your rinseless wash in like an empty 16 ounce bottle, but then you're just like pulling the trigger to distribute the product. It's much easier when you don't have to do the work. Exactly. So off you go, Nick. Okay, so I'm gonna start top to bottom. Yeah, and I'm gonna pre-spray the wheels with all clean at 15 to one. Well, that's a nice wide fan. You can adjust the nozzle a little bit here. There we go. Now the IK sprayer, we're also testing out a little battery pack for it. Uh, it works very well. Now I'll get some iron remover. Iron remover. The wheels were actually relatively clean, but we noticed they have a bit of an orange tinge to them. So instead of being an orange tinge, we'll make them red for a second or so and get that iron off of there. So while the rinseless is dwelling on the surface, doing its thing, the iron remover will be doing its thing on the wheels. I have the age old question, iron remover first or all clean first? Your choice really. Doesn't make that much of a difference. If the wheel is really caked on with iron, then I'll do the iron remover first. Boy, I can see the browning on the tires and the iron remover at work on the wheel face. Exactly.
You'll notice that we're in a new environment from our previous videos. This is a new shop we're building out and it's far from being built out. So we don't have the pressure washer yet. That's why we're going old school with a garden hose. Hashtag back to basics. Yeah, and for the wheels, rinse them off very well. And then to make future cleanings easier, quick beads. A couple sprays on the face of the wheel and we go from a flat water just sitting there to water graciously beading off the surface. Quick beads is great on your paint as well. Uh, just about everyone I've talked to though says they just love it on wheels. Yeah. It just makes that final wheel protection a breeze. On the surface of the paint, there was some accumulation, there was dirt, so we're gonna rinse it off. Yes, it's a rinseless wash, we're still rinsing. This is gonna help break down a lot of that traffic film, yeah. and then we'll add rinseless wash afterwards again to give us a little more lubrication for the contact wash. It's kind of amazing, Ivan, you think about rinseless wash, it, it looks clear, it looks like you know, when you've diluted it, almost like you just have water in your bucket. Yeah. You can't see it really on here because we didn't put it at a foaming dilution. But what has it already done to the paint that's allowing you to rinse off a lot of that crud? It's emulsified the dirt, meaning it's taken the dirt, encapsulated it, and in a Zwitter ionic cushion, lifts it off the surface. And we can see the vehicle's already beading and sheeting. Like, it's a fan of the channel, so obviously it takes care of his vehicle. But you see how clean it is? already and with that when we're going to respray the rinseless on it's going to provide lubrication do our contact wash and then we'll be safe to add the ceramic gloss with the psd towel everyone's going to be happy as ivan graciously squeegees the floor which is great to do even with a drain, we have this one drain down here. If you don't have a drain, squeegeeing more often is great. Nobody wants to walk around a wet floor and get their feet wet. I've once again treated the entire vehicle with a fine mist of a rinseless wash. Again, it's just diluted 256 to one because all we had to do was dump it in our bucket. And that's gonna give us lubrication and cleaning power for a contact wash, which we do with the anvil shaped Legacy sponge. Legacy sponge. And one of the other reasons for squeegeeing the floor is walking on water is not fun and it's a safety risk. So the drier the floor is, the less chance you have of slipping and hurting yourself. We have our um, perforated synthetic decontamination towels, which is our next step, in a separate bucket. Right. Uh, we don't need them in a separate bucket. It's just we're now going to take one bucket to one side of the car, one to the other. So. So I'll keep this as my bucket. Yeah. Or I'll go on the other side. How about that? I'll do it. Okay. Oh, here. I'll grab that. Off you go. There you go. From there, start at a logical place, which is normally the roof, and work your way down. Now you notice we're sort of reaching here. We don't have our little step stool that we normally have. It's on its way. It was buried in the storage unit, so. What do you think of our, of our new shop so far? Leave in the comments below. We're so excited for the potential this place has. It's gonna retain some of the character though. We're not gonna just totally make it a brand new looking shop. I love the, the walls and no, the we're, bars on the wall. There's, there's certain things about it that are pretty charming. Yeah, we're keeping the patina. This is a historical building in Omaha. It used to be called the Sports Car Garage. And the gentleman that was here repaired British sports cars and any other brand for that matter, but mostly what you saw in here were older British sports cars. And the building is actually a recycled building. Uh, there was a big packing house that was taken down many decades ago. And this building was built from the remains of that packing house. So no two windows match in the building. Uh, we have these humongous beams above us that support everything, and those came from the, the first story of a three-story packing house. So you can imagine how strong they are. You might say this building is overbuilt yes. for what it is. It's a nice building, it was worth saving, and it's in the uh, neighborhood called Little Bohemia, which is an up-and-coming neighborhood in Omaha. Another thing we're big fans of was wheels on our buckets. We don't have those yet either, so. Very much a back to basics. Especially because we've utilized the hose here. It's not very dirty, this paint. No. 
it's quite an enjoyable experience to uh, wash paint that's already been pre-treated and rinsed. Right. Now we feel a bit of contamination through the sponge. So when we start with the towel, we'll have even less contamination. Does it matter what direction people wash in, Ivan? Should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? So straight lines are good because now you're absorbing the dirt onto the sponge and you don't want to go in a, a circular motion for this part of it. After this, once we have any grit off, so once we've done the contact wash, any motion is fair game. And you notice we left the back of the vehicle to last. That's by design. This is normally the dirtiest part, especially in winter driving. And there we have it. Now, if we were just washing the vehicle, at this point we start drying. But we're giving it a little extra special treatment today. It's worth noting, Ivan, that our perforated synthetic decontamination towels, which have perforations on one side and then this nice diamond weave on the other. Uh, they've been sitting in a bucket of rinse us wash solution. Right, and Nick, I've seen people use it many different ways. One, unfortunately, is just dry, and they just put it dry in the vehicle. That's not gonna end well. Secondly, they keep it flat and just like this, and you've got this flapping around everywhere. We want you to fold it, and there's four reasons why we want you to fold it. Actually, many reasons. One is, well, you have four sides to work with. Secondly, less pressure points. That's very important. Third is, if you do happen to put a bit of pressure, you're gonna have moisture coming out of it providing extra lubrication. The other aspect of it is, it fits your hand better. So you're not flopping all over the place, and possibly, you know, if you're going around the fender, if you had it all wide open, it might start hitting the wheel or something like that. The reason we're drying right away is once we've done a panel, we dry it. Couple reasons for that. One is ceramic gloss sets up rather quickly. And if we leave a bead of ceramic gloss on the surface, it might be difficult to remove. So that's one of the reasons. Secondly is once you're done with a panel, you're done. You don't have to go around the car numerous times. To show how this is done, we take one spray on our towel, one spray on our panel. Where we sprayed on the panel is where we deposit the towel. And with no pressure whatsoever, I'm just gliding the towel on the surface. Some people ask, if I don't have ceramic gloss, can I use quick beads for this? Yes, you can. Is one better than the other? No, they both do a great job. I think it's more intuitive for people to use ceramic gloss because they're used to quick beads being a spray on and then rinse off product. So if you just right. like the idea of spraying ceramic gloss on and wiping it, it maybe just makes more sense to you. Maybe it's what you have at home. Yeah. That's why we teach the ceramic gloss method. Now, people always say, ooh, good catch. Thanks. Uh, always ask, well, are my towels gonna get loaded with ceramic? Yes, they are. We have two solutions for that. First, instead of taking your big drying towel and starting to dry this, take a smaller towel and use it to pre-dry. So this is actually acting like a squeegee. It's picking up the majority of it, leaving it so that when we take our normal drying towel, it has a lot less work to do and it's not gonna get full of ceramic. This one has a bit of ceramic gloss on it. And we're not going to flip the towel. We're gonna to use the same side. That way we're distributing more and more ceramic gloss as we go, we're picking up less. When we're done, this goes into our wash bucket. The surfactants in the wash bucket will prevent the ceramic from cross-linking. When it prevents the ceramic from cross-linking, that way when you go to launder your towel, they'll be good. So you have a protected, smooth, and decontaminated panel there. I love that. Already, yeah. So Nick's overdoing it. Two well, sprays instead of one. The, the first trigger didn't quite go. Oh, uh, okay. I've yeah. been known to go for the double. <laughs> you actually don't want um, too much ceramic gloss during this process, do you, Evan? No, more is definitely not better. And you kind of want to just use no pressure. You hear that? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but. Yeah, I can it, hear it from here, so. That's yeah, a little scratchy. Yep, and you just kind of go until it I'm just gonna give it a spray here for a fresh side because I like to overuse. But I wanna go and tell it. Tell 
Yeah, this paint is a little decontaminated, uh, isn't it, Ivan? It is. And you saw how it was beating even though it was contaminated. So that's a good sign. Means that it has protection underneath that contamination. And so you want to err on the side of, uh, of no pressure always. Give it a few extra passes. And now, that's just basically the sound of my towel. It's not contending with contamination anymore. Right. It's nice and quiet at this point. There's my quote unquote squeegee towel and then my drying towel. Oh, that is smooth and shiny, Ivan. <laughs> yes. Some things you just have to have that tactile sensation in person to feel, but yeah, that's great. We'll be doing the windows as well. That way, much easier to see out of when it's raining. Also, if you're in a snow belt area, much easier to clean the snow and frost off the vehicle. If we bring the camera in here, you'll see, yes, there's surface scratches, but there's no marring caused by the towel. And marring caused by the towel would be a whitish look over the surface. And that, we don't have. Yeah, this could use a little uh, uh, paint correction, a little po one step polish with our gold standard and maybe the yellow waffle, but that's not what we're doing today. It doesn't need it, it just... No. You could use it. Um, I mean, what happens if you're in a spot where the rinseless wash has dried on the surface? Add a little more rinseless wash to your surface. So uh, air on the side of rinseless versus too much ceramic gloss to add the lubrication? Definitely, yeah. The rinseless does a great job of lubricating. Ceramic gloss as well, but the two combined together just makes it a much safer experience for everyone involved. I may do just that and give it a little spritz. Because airing on the side of more lubrication, never a bad thing. Exactly. Right where I spray is where I deposit the towel. I think it's just a, it's a great way to think about it, isn't it, Ivan? Exactly. And that way you're guaranteed that under your towel you have the lubrication that you need. We're just trying to make this as simple as possible. There will always be variables that come up, but if you follow this process, you're guaranteed to get results. And if you have questions about the processes behind detailing, how we do it, why we do it, of course we have this whole library of videos and you can ask your questions here, but we also have a Facebook group. So if you go on Facebook, look for DIY detail, you'll see that we have a Facebook group with almost 50,000 people in it. And if you ask a question, you're gonna get an answer. You're not gonna get belittled for, answer, for asking a, a beginner question. I'll put a link to the Facebook group in the description below as well. Excellent. This is a spot where bug guts like to hang out. Yeah. The side view mirrors. Now speaking of drying out, the side is almost dry by itself, so we'll add a little more. I like to use one side of the towel per panel. If you're having any concerns about that, you can just dunk this back in your bucket of rinseless wash. And uh, it's pretty much clean. Fold it back up and you've got a fresh decon towel. Oh yeah, adding more rinseless just gives it so much lubrication. And that's what you want. You just want lubrication to mitigate against any potential risk of marring. That and no pressure, coupled with a wet towel that given any pressure will disperse more rinseless. And then of course, the folding it gives you a thicker towel as well to prevent, you know, those pressure points from accidentally giving you a whoopsie on the paint. Yeah, these sides are rather contaminated, aren't they? You can tell when someone's been taking care of their vehicle though. It, uh, it needed a little bit of work, but it cleans up nice. Oh, definitely. When you maintain your vehicle, it is easier to clean in future cleanings. It's just a nice cycle. And the ceramic gloss with the decontamination towel just does a wonderful job of cleaning the windows too. Now Nick, we're almost done. We still have the door jams to do. I'm curious how you'd approach these because you never know how dirty a door jam is going to be, right? Right. And if you use a nice drying towel on a door jam, sometimes it can get your nice drying towel real nasty. Well that's where this nice wet ceramic infused towel is now going to do a great job on the door jams. And if you're concerned that there's not enough lubrication, you could pre-spray with rinseless if you'd like. Right. But these look pretty nice. I mean, they're, they look, they just need to be mopped up. Yeah, exactly. So to speak. Like we said, the owner of this vehicle is a fan of the channel. 
So obviously someone who maintains their vehicle. And it doesn't take a ton of effort to just keep up on your vehicle. I mean, it is an hour here or there, you know, once a week. But it's an hour you can enjoy, and it's an hour well spent, I believe. Exactly. Bit of music. Well, and you know, the car is your second most expensive investment behind your house, if you yeah. have a house. So, I mean, these ain't cheap. No. And uh, it, there's, there's a sense of pride and enjoyment that comes along with a clean car, but you really are only able to reverse time so much if you neglect a vehicle um, in terms of the paint. So prevention is much better than the emergency room. Exactly. Find a little walk around, inspection, and then, you know, the cherry on the Sunday. Tire shine? Exactly. So we did a good job of cleaning the wheels. Therefore, we don't need a wheel specific towel. And that's something that I see a lot of people, they overcomplicate, they overthink things. It's like, oh, I need wheel towels, and I need door jam towels, and everything like that. If you're maintaining your vehicle on a regular basis, they don't get dirty enough to get your towels dirty. And if you did a good job cleaning your wheels, again, it's not gonna get your towels dirty. Any concern using this towel that had ceramic gloss on it? Not for what we're doing here, because we already have quick beads on the wheels. Oh, you're not using this on the tires? Yeah, on the tires as well. Oh, you are, okay. Yeah. There's not that much in the towel, and the towel tends to hold onto it as opposed to give it up. And then once you're done with the towel, it goes in your wash bucket. Let it sit there for 15 minutes, maybe half an hour. The surfactants are gonna break down or prevent the ceramic gloss from cross-linking. If it prevents the ceramic gloss from cross-linking, you're gonna get a much longer life out of your towel. You also wiped the, the tire? Yeah. Okay. Then the final piece, tire lotion. We're using a flag tip nylon brush, black and white in color, and just four or five sprays to start, but then after that, I don't need to add more. Uh, maybe one spray per tire. Now this brush we sell individually, we also have a wheel cleaning kit. So if you're the kit kind of person, you're just like, give me everything you got in the curated package, I will put that down below if you want it. I do think that having a brush to distribute the tire dressing is a game changer. Right, especially, you know, tires aren't just a, a smooth piece of rubber anymore. They have all these little designs in them, these little lines. This is just going to get into those lines. If you've got to lift a truck with the big knobby tires, same deal, this is going to get in there. And you've got great control that you're not getting any of the tire lotion on the wheels. Looks great, Ivan. Uh, Nick, if you want to give the plastics a little quick dry, we're going to use tire lotion on them as well. Great. So I'm going to dry these plastics down with the waffle weave towel here, and then Ivan's going to use that same brush to actually apply tire dressing to these exterior plastics. It's a great way to enhance the appearance and moisturize the plastic. Yeah, this is a nine-year-old truck uh, or SUV, and it's, the plastics are starting to go a little gray. We could use a restoration product on them, but in this case, they're not that bad. A little bit of tire lotion is just gonna make them pop again. And again, the brush gives us great control. We're not getting any on the paint, just on the plastics. And if you do get a little bit on the paint, not an issue, it just wipes right away. And if you do this on a regular basis, there's UV inhibitors in the tire lotion. They're going to prevent your trim from going gray instead of black. Man, that tire lotion just makes the vehicle pop, doesn't it? Yeah. Like I said, the cherry on the Sunday. The brush does a great job of spreading it evenly and only spreading it where we want it to be. I'm just walking around to check around the plastics to make sure there's nothing that hit the paint. And if so, I'll just do a quick wipe, but it looks pretty good, Ivan. Yeah. I was like flipping up the back and the hatch and you just find spots that, oh, I maybe didn't quite get all the drips there. Right, that Final little quality control. That little area right over the license plate is always a harborer of little drips. And you gotta do a final wipe of the backup camera as well. Yeah, exactly. You may have started this video thinking, 
I'm not a big fan of Honda CRVs. I hope you ended with a very different mindset because I think this looks amazing. We didn't even polish this, Ivan. No, it's got a nice shine to it. Yes, there's the odd little scratch, there's the odd little thing happening here and there, but that's not the goal of detailing. Detailing is not about perfection, it's about preservation. And if we were to polish every scratch out, we may make this paint too thin. And then the next time it gets a scratch, they're gonna wanna polish it out again and again and again. Polishing is not something you can do every day. Polishing is not something you should do every year. It's only as necessary. So if you maintain it properly, you're gonna mitigate deep scratches. You're gonna reduce a lot of the, you know, the little love marks as people call them. And by not driving through a car wash and washing it yourself, obviously you're gonna do a better job too. We talked earlier in the video about ceramic gloss versus quick beads, our two spray on protection products. If you're wondering when to use either, man, this is the video for you. We hope you go right now to ceramic gloss versus quick beads, everything you need to know.